In this Learning Byte video for Windows Home Server 2011, I'm going to show you how to set up a home group. To get started, select Dashboard from the Launchpad. Type in your Windows Home Server admin password and click Login. Home group allows individual PCs to quickly and easily share content with each other. Having a home server to a home group allows you to have an always-on solution that gives your media an always-on available access. This is in the event a PC leaves your home or it goes into standby mode or hibernation. To configure it inside your home server, go ahead and select Server Settings. And on the left, we have our home group page. From here, we can go ahead and create our home group. The home group wizard provides us with a list of permissions for individual folders. We're going to set all these permissions to full access. This gives everybody inside the home group the ability to add, remove, or change files. If we were to set this to read only, they'd only be able to view the content. If you set it to none, the user does not have access to that specific shared folder. Now that our home group's been configured, we're presented with a password. This is a pretty tough password to remember. You can use this password, or you can actually change home group password. From here, we can change the home group password to pretty much anything we want. I'm going to go ahead and copy this and save password. And now we have an easy to remember password. We can also view the home group password if we ever forget it, as well as leave the home group if we need to make any changes. Now that our home group has been configured, let's go ahead and add our PC. We're going to click our shared folders down here and select home group from the libraries menu. From here we get a join button. Once the home group wizard is opened, we get a list of folders that we can also share to the home group. I'm going to go ahead and select all the folders. And click next, and then we're going to type in our home group password. And finish. Now that our PC is attached to the home group, we can go through and look at any of the PCs that are inside the home group, including the home server. If we go into the shared folders, we get a list of all the content that's available from that particular PC. All this content is indexed. That means it can be searched quickly and easily. Obviously, we don't have a lot of content here, but this is just an example. Now that we found our song, we can right-click it, we can play it, or we can add it to our Windows Media Playlist if that's what we wanted to do. We can also drag and drop content here and make it readily be available for future access and to any other PC that's inside the home group. Home group is also available through Windows Media Player. If you're familiar with Play 2, you can actually set up Windows Media Player to be a part of it. To do this, you need to make sure Allow Remote Control of My Player is checked. This turns that particular PC into a set of speakers where you can play content to it. If you have content on that PC and you want to make it available to other devices, select Automatically Allow Devices to Play My Media. To give an example of this, we can go into our home server, go into music, and then right click any song and say play to. This is also available to pictures and videos. And as you can see, my Sony Bravia TV is available to be played to. This concludes our home group learning byte video. If you're interested in other Windows Home Server 2011 features, please check out our other learning byte videos.